Good evening, and it's great to start another week with all of you at home. And we begin tonight with that bombshell report on President Trump and his taxes. The election just 36 days away now, and this is the most extensive reporting yet on the matter. Reporters at the New York Times revealing that they have examined 18 years of President Trump's taxes. 11 of those years, they report President Trump paid no federal income taxes at all. And the year he won the White House, they say he paid $750 in federal income taxes. The same the following year. That's about the same amount an American worker earning $20,000 a year pays in federal income taxes, $750. The Times points to those 11 years in which Trump paid no federal income taxes at all. And the Times also reporting that the president is hundreds of millions of dollars in debt, more than $420 million, they say, in debt, that could come due over the next four years if he's elected, leading to questions, who is that money owed to? And, of course, all of this just 24 hours before the first face-to-face -face debate between President Trump and Joe Biden. Here's our chief White House correspondent, Jonathan Carl, leading us off tonight. On the eve of the first presidential debate, the American public is getting what's been described as the first detailed look at one of Donald Trump's most closely guarded secrets, his tax returns. In its blockbuster report, the New York Times reviewed detailed information on nearly two decades worth of Trump tax returns. The details are startling. Trump paid no federal income taxes at all in 11 of the 18 years they reviewed. In 2016, the year he won the White House, Trump reportedly paid only $750. For his first year in office, he again paid just $750. $750 is roughly the federal income tax bill of someone who makes $20,000 a year. At the White House, the president insisted the Times report was not accurate. Well, first of all, I paid a lot, and I paid a lot of state income taxes, too. But state and federal income taxes are two different things. The president built his brand and his campaign on being a business genius with a Midas touch. I have great business sense. I made a lot of money, and I had great success. So I've had great success. By the way, really successful. But the Times reports the Trump businesses, including his golf courses and resorts, are actually a wash in red ink. His Washington hotel reportedly lost $55.5 million since it opened four years ago. His foreign ventures, according to the Times, are among the few that have actually made money since he became president, more than $73 million, some of the most profitable in countries with authoritarian leaders, including the Philippines and Turkey. When Trump ran for president the first time, he insisted he was loaded with money and had almost no debt whatsoever. Need debt. You know, it's very interesting. I'm so liquid, I don't need debt. And if but the Times reports the president is actually drowning in debt, including more than $421 million that could come due over the next four years. The paper noting that if Trump is reelected, quote, his lenders could be placed in the unprecedented position of weighing whether to foreclose on a sitting president. Today, the president tweeted he has very little debt compared to the value of assets. He has repeatedly said his tax returns are under IRS audit. It's under audit. They've been under audit for a long time. The IRS does not treat me well. The newspaper reports the IRS is in fact investigating a $72.9 million tax refund the president received in 2010 and whether he took improper deductions. The Times found Trump took tax deductions for money spent on his lavish lifestyle, including $70,000 on hairdressers during his time on The Apprentice and more than $95,000 for Ivanka Trump's makeup artist. The president says he is entitled, like everyone else, to depreciation and tax credits. He has long refused to turn over his tax returns, but he's also bragged about his ability to avoid paying taxes. The only years that anybody's ever seen were a couple of years when he had to turn them over to state authorities when he was trying to get a casino license, and they showed he didn't pay any federal income tax. So that makes if me he's smart. paid zero, that means zero for troops. The Biden campaign points out that most voters do pay taxes, releasing an ad today highlighting working class people who have paid more federal income tax than the self-described billionaire in the White House. All right, so let's get right to John Carl. He's with us live in Cleveland, the site of the debate tonight. And, John, we will all press the uh, president on his taxes through the years. Uh, four years ago, I asked then-candidate Donald Trump uh, when he would release them. He said what he said to so many reporters after the audit. 
But he also told me, I went back to the transcript, he said, you know, I tell you it's not a big deal. I asked, you don't think some voters will care? He said, I don't think so. I think people don't care. And John, uh, I'm curious, you know, four years later, that remains the central question. Will some undecided voters care now with this new reporting? Well, David, the Biden campaign has unveiled a tax calculator today where you can compare how much you pay in taxes with how much Donald Trump paid. And you can be sure Biden is going to make this a central issue that he hits in the debate tomorrow night. They sure believe that this is an issue that really hits home, an issue of fundamental fairness. You hear the rain there behind you in Cleveland, that debate tomorrow night, as okay. I mentioned off the top. John Carl, thank you. We'll see you tomorrow. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.